Welcome to this new tutorial series on microservices. In this series, we'll be diving deep into the world of modern application architecture, building a complex microservice system one video at a time. Today, we're kicking things off by exploring containerization and Docker technologies that have revolutionized how we develop, deploy, and scale applications. But before we jump into containers, let's take a step back and consider the challenges faced by product owners and developers when they set out to build a new application. Imagine you're tasked with creating the next big thing an innovative app that will change the world. Exciting, right? But hold on, because before you can even start designing your application's features, you're confronted with a daunting array of technical considerations. These considerations can quickly become overwhelming, potentially delaying your project before you've written a single line of code for your actual application. But don't worry, this is where containerization comes in to save the day. In this video, we'll explore how containerization, and specifically Docker, can help you overcome these challenges and streamline your development process. Let's dive in. So, let's start with containerization, a revolutionary approach to software development and deployment. Containerization allows us to package an application and all its dependencies into a standardized unit called a container. Think of a container like a shipping container. Just as shipping containers can be easily moved between ships, trucks, and trains, software containers can be effortlessly transferred between different computing environments. Containers provide a consistent environment for your application, regardless of where they're running. This means you can develop on your local machine, test in a staging environment, and deploy to production all with the confidence that your application will behave the same way in each environment. Docker has become synonymous with containerization much like Kleenex for tissues. But what exactly is Docker? Docker is a platform that uses containerization technology to make it easier to create, deploy, and run applications. It does this through several key concepts. Image. An image is a lightweight, standalone, and executable package that includes everything needed to run a piece of software, including the code, runtime, libraries, and system tools. Layers. A Docker layer is a read-only file system change in the image, representing a specific instruction in the Docker file. Let's look at this Docker file, which starts from the Ubuntu 24.10 image. This is the first layer of our image, and the run command creates a second layer that installs Nginx on top of the Ubuntu base image. Simple, right? Containers. These are the running instances of Docker images. If an image is a class in object-oriented programming, a container is an object of that class. Docker Engine. This is the core software that runs and manages Docker containers on a host system. It allows you to build and run containers. In this example, as you can see, we're running multiple instances of the same container simultaneously on the same Docker engine. Okay. Now that we understand what Docker is, let's explore why it's so powerful. So, why using Docker? or other containerization technologies. First, consistency. Docker ensures that your application runs the same way everywhere, eliminating the, it works on my machine, problem. Second, efficiency. Containers share the host system's OS kernel, making them much lighter and faster than traditional virtual machines. Third, rapid deployment. With Docker, you can quickly spin up new containers to scale your application or deploy updates. Fourth, Isolation. Each container runs in its own environment, preventing conflicts between applications or versions. And last, version control. Docker allows you to track versions of your container images, rollback when needed, and maintain consistency across your development pipeline. These advantages make Docker an invaluable tool for modern software development, addressing many of the challenges we discussed earlier. Whether you're a solo developer or part of a large team, Docker can streamline your workflow and help you focus on what really matters building great applications. And talking about building, why don't we build our image and container? All right, let's get started. In the next few minutes, we're going to install all prerequisites we need. We'll then build our image, run our container, and we'll naturally validate that everything works as expected. Okay, let's get cranked. We have three critical prerequisites to install. Obviously, we need to install Docker Desktop. We'll then download and install MySQL Workbench. And then, we'll also download and install GitHub Desktop, 
since all the code you need to go through that exercise is available via GitHub. And to make it simple, all the links are listed in the video description. So check them out. Now, please, pause the video, proceed with the installations, and I'll see you soon. Okay, welcome back. You should now be ready to build our sample Docker image. First, start GitHub Desktop and get ready to clone the Docker IMDB repository as shown on this video. Again, the link to the GitHub repo is provided in the video description. Now, let's build the image. First, start Docker Desktop and open a terminal window. In the terminal window, navigate to the root of the folder of Docker IMDB repository you've just cloned. In this folder, you'll find a Docker file, which defines the two layers of our image. First layer is latest MySQL image. The second layer is adding our database, called IAMDB, which is defined in this init.sqldl file. Last, we just need to build our image, as shown here. And we're done. You've created your own Docker IMDB image. Now that we have our image, we just need to instantiate it, and by the same token, to run it. But first, let's look at the env file which is where we're defining our mysql root and user information now let's run our container using the docker run command don't worry if it's going too fast in the repository you cloned you'll find a readme file providing you details instructions to go through this first tutorial and last let's not forget to validate our container is running and that we can connect and query our database Start MySQL Workbench, then, create a new connection as shown here. And don't forget to change the username to admin, to avoid using the root user. You can then connect, enter the admin password defined in the .env file. And you're connected. You can now query the database and see all the tables of our IAMDB database. Cool right? Okay, let's recap what we've done in less than 5 minutes. You installed all three prerequisites. You cloned our Docker IAMDB repo and built our image with its two layers. You instantiated and ran the container. And you validated that you could connect and query the IAMDB database hosted in your running container. All right, this is it for today. But this is not the end. In the next tutorial of this new series, we'll talk about the MVC pattern with a twist. Because we'll add an advanced business layer to this pattern. Not only that, we'll see how this pattern is implemented in Java, and yes, this means that we'll be implementing the initial iteration of our first microservice. To be more precise, we'll build a Spring Boot Java application which will provide RESTful APIs to interact with our IAMDB database that we've just created and containerized. And we'll make sure that our code is foolproof by having a 100% unit test coverage. So, please, stay tuned, and subscribe if you'd like to get notified when the next tutorial is published. Thank you, and see you next time.